Now pay close attention to this video because it will change your designer life. I'm going to talk about five awesome game design tips that will skyrocket your game design to the next level. The first tip has to do with how you can create gameplay diversity in your game. And that is present the player with an archetype and then break the archetype. What does that mean? Let me, let me tell you because it's super simple and it's very, very easy to do in RPGs and in games in which you have already established mechanics. What do you mean by archetypes that defy expectations? It's the beastmaster that does not have any beast. It's the thief that does not have any stealth. It's the necromancer that is actually a good guy, is not evil. And that is a very simple way to create novelty and to create game options for the player. And this can be applied to any game, really. Uh, any game that de can defy player's expectation in which player has a choice. And one of the choices that the player can make is completely antithetic to the other choices, to what the player should actually be doing. Keep that in mind because it's a goldmine of game design and game ideas. That's how you come up with real cool character ideas, story ideas for the game. And I challenge you to leave a comment in the comment section below describing an archetype which can defy expectations. Give me an example. Give the other people an example. What you think is cool, what you think can defy players' expectations, put a twist on it. A second tip in this video is to keep the RNG for the player and not for the enemies. What that means is that the enemies in a game should be fairly predictable. They should have a fairly predictable moveset and they should do fairly predictable damage. But that way the player knows when to engage an enemy, when not to engage an enemy. On the other hand, you can definitely keep RNG for the player. You can definitely give the player critical strikes random procs on weapons. Why that is, is because when the enemies are predictable but the player is not predictable, the player can actually make sense of that and predict what could happen in the future. And the most important thing is that it creates gameplay diversity for the player. It creates some moments in which the player has really cool crits, really cool effects. On the other hand, it's never cool when you're fighting an enemy and it's super close but you get critical strike and then you get critical strike again. Unless you're playing Darkest Dungeon. But yeah, to summarize this up, keep the RNG for the player, try to give the enemies as little RNG as possible. I played a game, I played a game on my phone recently which was based around making choices on which enemies to fight. Problem was, enemies had a lot of RNG on their attacks. It made a game quite uh, nasty to play because the game is based around choices but you couldn't really make the choices like you can expect an enemy to kill you in two hits or in five hits. Anyway, on to my third game design tip on this list. If you want the player to play a certain way, don't punish the player but to reward them for playing that certain way. What does it mean? I recently saw a GDC talk exactly on this and gave some examples from actual games. In World of Warcraft, the devs didn't want the players to play the game for too long. So at first they thought about punishing the player for playing the game for too long by reducing the amount of experience the character gains. The longer they play on the same character without stopping, the, the slower they progress. And they figure out this kind of sucks for the players because it's really not fun. The idea they came up with is really, really smart because instead of punishing them, they rewarded the player for not playing the game. So now outside of the game, when you're logged out of the game, you gain rested experience, which for a time, you get double experience from killing monsters. And the more you stay logged out of the game, the more rested experience you gain. So the faster you level, the less you play. There was also a bad example in that GTC talk about XCOM in that the devs wanted the players to play fast to take risks because that was the more fun gameplay. So they forced the player to do that by setting up a loss condition. If you don't win by turn X, you lose. And the point was that this was not a good solution because the better solution would be to give the player better rewards if they complete the game faster, if they complete the mission faster. So that's the tip. If you want the player to play a certain way, to use a certain strategy, to be aggressive instead of passive, to play fast instead of slow reward them for doing this. Usually the simplest way is to, if your game has levels, increase, uh, give them some rewards for the level. Thief, a game I recently played, did this. On every mission you gain bonus gold when you complete the mission if you remain undetected. They want you to play as a thief. They reward you for playing as a thief. Quick note, if you're enjoying this video do consider hitting the like button because it really helps me a lot. And 
If you like game design tips, my channel is full of game design tips. Check them out. Number four is coming up right now. Is that scarcity makes player want that thing. So take a game in which you have lots of gold. Whenever you loot something, you get gold. Everywhere, everything rewards you with gold. Now, even if you can buy stuff with gold, when you open a chest in this game and you get gold, it's not exactly gonna feel that good, right? I mean, yeah, sure, it's a reward, it's good, I can buy stuff, but is it really exciting when you get gold? Mm, not really. And that's why legendary and rare items in games are exciting to get. It's not necessarily for the player power, for the power that gives you the character, but because they're rare. That's the whole point. See, now World of Warcraft, nowadays, every item is an epic item. In late game, whenever you get an item, you know, it's just gonna be an epic, a rare item. A rare item. And I've seen lots of players also complain about this, that rare items are not rare anymore. Everyone has them. So even if they're really strong, honestly, they're not that rewarding. On the other hand, if you reward the player with something rare, something they can only get once in a while, no matter what that is, the player is gonna like it. Now, this transitions very beautifully into my number 50. This is the most important tip I have on this list. You ready to hit? Here goes. Rewards for the player can be any type of content in the game. Often when game designers think of rewarding the player, they tend to reward the player with in-game currency, scores, achievements, cosmetic items, and so many game designers fail to figure out that that's not the only reward in the game. In fact, the player is not even playing for those things. The player is playing for the game content. Rewarding the player with extra content is the best reward you can give a player. Unlocking a new zone for the player is the best reward. When a player finds a puzzle, the puzzle itself is the reward. Yeah, also the puzzle usually gives you some in-game rewards, like gold, gold items, whatever. But it in itself is the best reward. When you reach a new zone, when you fight a new boss, when you hear a new music soundtrack, that is what the player really wants. The player doesn't care. The player doesn't play the game for the in-game gold. The player doesn't play the game for in-character skill points. Because once they finish playing the game, these do not transition into the real life, unlike the content and the memories and the music, soundtracks, cinematics, content, puzzles, challenges, things to see, new things for the players to see, story, lore pieces. That is what does transition into real life because it stays in the memory of the player. And that is how you make the player play the game because, because rewarding the player with content, rewarding the player with new stuff, no matter what that new stuff is, is somewhere between intrinsic and extrinsic rewards, right? Intrinsic rewards is when the player plays Minecraft and they finish building the house and that's the reward for them. The, the fact that they finish building their awesome dream house. An extrinsic reward is when the game rewards the player with actual stuff, experience, gold, items. Rewarding the player with content, I say somewhere between that and it's a perfect spot. It hits, it hits the spot on what the player really wants. That is why this is very important. Please do remember that the game, more of the game, is actually what the player wants. If the player is engaged in the game, you can give them gold, you can give them in-game items, but it's never gonna be as impactful as giving them more of the game. That being said, if you're liking this video, if you're liking my channel, do consider subscribing, it helps me a lot. And do you watch some of my other game design videos, I've got tons on this channel. If you wanna talk, let's talk on Twitter, Facebook, or in the comment section. Until next time, have a nice development journey, friends.